Hello. Welcome to Die Master. Monkey. Thank you. Walking up and down and... Make sure that they...
Hello, welcome to Die Master.
Make sure that they 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 Make sure the
the microphone because I was going really fast and I pulled it out over here. I was all, it seems in my way. It is in my way sometimes actually. So uh, you guys were listening to the onboard 404 microphone for there for a moment. Sorry about that. Uh, must have been a lot of room noise. Also I knocked over the microphone. <coughs> so 
So for a bit of information, you are of course tuned into uh, another Master Monkey presentation. Today is a beat grinder. Why can't I hear myself? Because it's a Master Monkey show. Okay, let's see. Yeah, there we go. All right. You're tuned into... Uh, oh no, that's for Drone Sonia. Never mind. I don't use effects for this one. This is a beat grinder. This is our production show. Oh, the Casio just timed out. Whenever you hear that sound, that's the SK-1 timing out. And man, that thing, we gave it a workout there for a little while. So uh, I might go into how I did that earlier. That'll be part of, because I'm, you know, as I told you, I'm compiling a set of tip videos and stuff like that. Anyways, that was cool with the 202, you know, believe it or not, I've never actually tried that before. Um, variety of simpler techniques with the 202 that you've seen on this show and that I've covered elsewhere as well. But uh, traditional finger drumming, you know, of that sort. I haven't tried it on the 202. It's, it's kind of a weird effect. Of course, it depends um, how, it, how it behaves rhythmically uh, or, let's say, percussively as a percussion instrument. Depends on whether they're set to gate or uh, trigger. Those are all set to. You crazy? You crazy? Those were all set to gate. If you're curious, so if I was getting long hits, it was because I was holding it down. Of course, as you know, under most circumstances, you're not going to get more than about two samples. Uh, two, two. And in some cases, this this is working because there's no filter on these guys. And they're all lo-fi, standard fire, actually. Something like that. Anyways, tried to sign up for it, and they had this big disclaimer on there. They do not accept uh, samplers or loop players. Loop players. Loop player. <laughs> you know, loop player. I mean, I've seen a lot of buskers that play go a lot closer to playing a loop than I do. I mean, just to get through a standard guitar song, you got to go through a loop. I mean. Loop. Anyways, uh, the reason I mentioned that is because I wanted to say, like, you don't have to think about these pods. It's like, so here's the thing. Sometimes I get people will be like, man, if you did this or that, it would be hip hop or whatever. So, I mean, if this were some sort of gangster hit and this were a bass drum instead of whatever weird noise that is, and this were a tom, and this were a kiss snare. You're crazy! Were, uh, crash. You know, the whole spiel. But with that, and, and two of these were gangster samples or something. Maybe one was a little distant uh, electric jazz piano organ sample or something. Uh, then, what a instant hit. Right? Freaking boring, man. And besides, it's treating this like a musical calculator, man. You should think about these pads like, well, you can think about them like drums sometimes. <laughs> But there's a bunch of different ways of playing drums, right? I mean, there's a straightforward, like... Oh, it doesn't work with that. There's that, right? But then there's, like, you know... Um, uh, what am I thinking? Not that, that's not what I mean. What I meant is, um, I mean, you could, you could be more expressive with drums, too. I mean, they're straightforward drums, right? You know, there's uh, Don Boyle's drums, right? I'm a big admirer, by the way, of Don Boyle's. I think he does punk awesome. He does punk drums awesome. Total lead foot. Uh, but, you know, I mean, and then there's expressive drums. I mean, you can be expressive with them, too. And uh, so you can think of them as drums. But also, you could think of these just because they're not laid out the right way. You could think of them like, you know, uh, you know, keys on a on a piano keyboard, right? Uh, there's no reason you can't treat them like that too, and or a combination of both. It could be like, well, this one, for this moment, I'm going to treat it like a drum pad, you know, like a drum, and then like sometimes I'm going to treat it like. A 
like a note, you know, like some sort of musical note, only in a weird sort of music that wasn't constrained by these ideas of keys and all that kind of stuff. And like, you know, verses and forms and all these formats and stuff, it's just like it's too complacent. <coughs> and it's easy, you know, to take those routes. It's really easy. It's a lot easier, actually. I guess I mostly don't because I'd be bored. That's the main thing. I would be really bored. And I have tried, actually, and it still comes out boring and then restarted, so I'm, I'm like playing hold drums. You know what hold music is? It's like hold music, but it's just drums. <laughs> Hold on, we're going to do some hold drums. just blew out like all kinds of levels over here but I was enjoying it and that's exactly what I was just talking about a while ago I was all you know I have formulas and pain by the numbers and all that kind of stuff I'm like man I could just replace all of these with sane samples and like beat friendly stuff and and it'd be like bam instant hit and actually that kind of happened once by accident I was glitch gangsta but half of it's so I'm so schizophrenic that like half of it sounds like a waltz and then suddenly it accidentally turns into a gangsta tune sort of thing. People were all, wow, man, that's pretty nasty. And it is pretty nasty, actually. But, I mean, I was bored with it before, like, a three-minute sequence could even be, you know, recorded. <laughs> so I was already bored. I was, like, freaking moving on. So. And that little bit, even though it was crazy noisy, I'm like, I'm going to enjoy it on the review. I'm going to be like, man, maybe there's some good stuff in here because it's freaking new. That's I'm just tired of anything I've heard before. <coughs> And I listen to too much everything. I'm just obsessive about everything. So I've heard everything. I've pretty much heard everything. All of it, too much. It's getting hard to find new stuff. And you listen to like, something that's like one note for three minutes. And then you're desperate. That means you're desperate for new ideas. <laughs> Give me anything new. You gotta be desperate to listen to. You know that joke, right? I hope you know that joke. And I was meant to record this too. It would be good to actually have it and then make a recording of it. You, you know how many, how many experimental musicians it takes, how many experimental music composers it takes to screw in a light bulb? Three minutes and 13 seconds of a light bulb being screwed in. <laughs> Wait, where's my rim shot? Oh, I just realized I could do my own rim shots on this show. How come I've never done that? Because I don't do jokes. Well, there's a joke, so... No, how do they do a rim shot? I don't know that. 
All right, so this is Beatgrinder. It's a production sort of show, sort of thing. It's uh, just a thing, you know, like uh, other people have, like, production shows. Uh, well, we have one, too. It's, uh, our, this is the monkey version of a, of a production show. Which means it starts out with, like, a half an hour of me drumming. That was fun. Actually, I almost... I've already been like, I've only been almost an hour. I spent the whole time drumming. I hope I got some good drumming down. Because that's fun. And I like the footage. It's fun. I've been exploring a lot of new rhythms and stuff like that. Uh, there's some background noise here. Give me a moment, guys. I'll take care of it. Uh, I'll give you something. Else. Audiological ties with the <laughs> Puerto Rico and their struggle for independence and they consider themselves to be soldiers. Okay, and we're back. Uh, yeah, that was Patty Hurst, by the way. Uh, hit me up all night. Twitter, or you could just check my Twitter, it's, uh, I tweeted that, like, right before I tweeted the Drone Somnia episode that made extensive use of it. Um, that is some great stuff, by the way, so Patty Hurst, uh, you kids don't know, uh, I don't know, it's before my time, you know, it's been slightly, she, uh, did some sort of, uh, I brought that radio I promised to play with one time, Earthquake Radio, it's crazy, um, so, Patty Hurst, I don't know, She's one of the pastos, you know, people from the past. Uh, she got kidnapped or something by these weird rebel army confused people, actually. First world confused army is what they probably were. Anyways, um, yeah, that was her talking about it. Some sort of ransom, hostage sort of thing. So we got this radio here. It's called an Eaton FR300. Uh, emergency radio. And when you play with it, uh, it's dynamo powered. So when it gets like, uh, runs low on the power, it starts like sounding really crazy. Uh, just like, not really crazy, but it does tune in like partial stations and stuff. So we're gonna play with it. I've been meaning to record some of this and sample some of it. Yeah, we use this stuff, man. I think I'll get rid of that. What do we got here? because I don't feel it, right? Somebody who likes doing that should do that. Regulars, no, the Casio's off screen. I'm gonna fix that pretty soon, I promise. But 
that's up here. They know when it's there because they hear that little dink, right? That. <laughs> that means the Casio just got a sample. So here's what it sounds like in the Casio, what we just played. Hmm. All right, maybe I shouldn't be so quick. All right, what we're going to do record a real brief sequence here. three of my Casio SK-1 brethren <laughs> out there. Um, so when I turn on the Casio, here's how I turn it on. It's on and it's in record mode immediately. Okay, it's always in record mode because I can always hit clear, right? So that way, because I'm, I'm all about live performance, right? So if something comes up, something, you know, I want to sample or and something I want to, I want to run a line or something like that and have it play, it's in record mode automatically. So, um, so right there, after we got the sample, I just started playing something, right? I didn't like the first one, so I hit clear and I played something else. And now it's, it's sitting in there. Um, I don't know if you noticed, but at the end, I ended with like four long things. It's just to tell me that that's all the recording that there is. So, and now, they don't tell you this in the manual, by the way. In the manual, they say you're supposed to switch to play now and then hit autoplay, but you don't have to. You just leave it and record, which is what I'm gonna do now. Right? And it's like, so you can do your recording and then immediately start the playing, like, on the next beat. So I'll do, like, one, two, three, four at the end or something just so I know. And then I'll hit, I'll hit autoplay. And then, so when it starts, then I can come right back down here to drums or something else, or maybe the synth, right? Get it? That's what I do. That's like, <laughs> seriously, that's like 85% of of monkey. That's 85% of monkeys. All the songs are like that. They all start with the Casio. <laughs> People are always like, oh man, nice 404 skills, nice low skills, I like keep that 202. I'm like, yeah, of course, man, you know, that's just great, but you guys don't even know. It's the Casio, actually, the SK-1 is behind <laughs> all of it. <laughs> and it's off screen most of the time. Why? Because we all gotta have our little secret weapons. I put the Arturia over here, so people think, man, I gotta get an Arturia. Which you do. You do need this thing. I'm serious. I freaking do need it. Anyways. Okay, so, it's the Casio. It's the SK-1. Now we got a thing in there. I got a little routine. I'm gonna run it now. Get some water. <laughs> Some of you out there, some of you out there who really know this gear, uh, probably figured out a long time ago that I was running the SK-1 through the 202. Uh, that's because every time I'm, I'm using the SK-1, the 202 source is on. And sometimes I'll feed something into the SK-1, and you don't really hear me feed it in there, and then I'll do something to set it up. And then I reach over here and turn on the source, and the SK-1's already running it. Here, I'll show you what I mean. Wait, no, no, man, I can't now. I can't now because uh, I changed it. It's it's going through the, two o the 404 now instead of the 202. And here's why I used to run the SK-1 through the 202, and then 
I'd be like to add a little, you know, juice to it. Uh, I would use the filters or whatever on the source, right? So you can run, you can run filter on the source. By the way, you can't change the pitch, you can't change the time of the del you can't use the del delay, but you can use the the filter and the ring mod, both filters and ring mod. So I would run that, right, like that. And uh, now I'm running the microboot through it. I think. Let's see here. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, see, that's what I would do. I would like already the sounds already going through it, but then like you wouldn't hear it, and then I would use it like this, you know, like maybe as a gate or something, or maybe as a I'm doing this sort of thing, right? That kind of thing. Anyways. Boot, I'm, I'm not playing with you today, actually. I'm focusing on these guys. Anyways, so uh, it used to be running it through that. Now I'm running the SK-1 in through the 404. Um, and that's its, its only audio path, by the way, to, to the output. Um, I didn't just do that for entertainment. Remember, you got to do something to the Casio every six minutes, or it will time out. So, um, and it will lose its sample. And the thing I recorded and everything, and we don't want that. Um, so, anyways, now I'm running it through the 404, and here's why. Because it's freaking ill, guys. Check this out. turns out a Casio SK-1 through a 404 is wicked cool and I don't think anyone else quite has that combination of sound so that's mine now. That's oh I got a good pointing. That's mine! When I'm off camera. Anyways. Uh. Oops. <laughs> I bumped into the mic. Okay. Um, I know I did introduce our Co-host, by the way, the girl with girl with no name is back. Yay, we did find her. And Cowboy Mike is most pleased about that. This isn't one of those shows, anyways. This is Beat Grinder. It's a production show. It's for music types and stuff. Uh, but usually there is a bunch of crazy shit. Um, so you know what else I like to do with that, right? So now that we have that sample in there, the cool part is I hit reset. Uh, now that we have that sample in there and we have that recording in there. Uh, I, I got uh, I got two things I can do with it. I can I can load a new sample in there and use it with the existing recording, which is a little dicey, especially if it's rhythm based, um, but can be awesome too. Uh, or I can keep the sample and use it with a, a new rhythm, right? Um, so, but actually, I like to do the, the the first one. So check out what I'm going to do. I'm going to hit the sample right now, and when I hit sample, it's waiting, right? first noise that's loud enough, it's going to start recording 1.6 seconds. That's what it is on the SK-1. That's it. SK-1's got its sample, right? <coughs> but there's already a recording in there of the of the keys, right? Of the key strokes. It's a, it's a weird sort of, it's not a step sequencer, it's not even a sequencer, it's sort of weird. It seems to record exactly when you hit the keys. And, uh, but not the keys themselves. <laughs> it's a very strange device. But, so anyways, when we have autoplay now, what it's going to do is play that, that previous sequence that we had put in, but it's going to use that new sample, which is a totally different rhythm, I think. So it should be interesting. Here we go. So that's actually much more, that one was rather similar, and we can add the micro group, which I just turned off, no, we're not going to, anyways. It could be something else too, right? Like this. So I'm going to feed a new sample, but we're going to keep that same sequence. I don't even know what that was. <laughs> it just came out. Here we go. This 
show's getting too popular. I gotta do something about my connection or something. If you got tips on how I can support more people, the sound is the important part, not the video. But oh, the Casio. Oh, it's, it did time out. Okay. What was I talking about? Oh yeah, there's no bass in Bitch I Remix the Kool Aid. There's no bass line. Uh, it's the subsonic. It's the sub feature on the 404. Add a sub to anything. Like changing the harmonic. Uh, you go in by actually by cueing it to the harmonic. where the bass in Bitch I Remix the Kool-Aid came from. There was no bass at Durton's. Uh, it's a, uh, but Durton's is, I mean, Che, Che was uh, on guitar and Nilla Wafer was on vocals. And that's it. And then that's me two hours later on drums and the subsonic feature on, on bass. So there isn't any bass in there in that song. It, uh, that is for you four or four people. That's your MFX feature number 21. I gotta warn you, it's a bit squirrely. And when a bunch of bass comes through and you're not expecting it, it will blow your friggin' levels all to hell. So let's try that for a bit. <laughs> But, uh, so again, uh, if you're going to use the subsonic, that's MFX feature number 23, it's, so you got to do this thing, which is a pain in the butt to get to. But, uh, but uh, do be careful of it, it's squirrely. Start with the balance, that's this far rightmost knob, knob number 3. Start with the balance all the way to the left, and then ease it up real careful, because the thing will jump right at you. Anyways, thank goodness the show's over, because I think I dropped the stream like 20 times. Uh, which is good. Thank you all for tuning in. I can tell um, people are enjoying this and they're coming back and I'm getting way too many people for the stream to handle. <laughs> but I'm going to work on that and uh, next show we'll support more people and hope to see you guys next time. And uh, have a good have a good day, monkey. Where's the goodbye song? <laughs> What?